Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In the last episode, we talked about how we could generate a consensus taxonomy for our classification results from the hundred or possibly a thousand different bootstrap subsamplings. If this is all gobbledygook to you, hang on, don't go anywhere. <laughs> I can guarantee you, you're going to get something out of these episodes to learn something more about how we can program in R and some of the design considerations that come into play when designing functions that we want our users to use. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is make a package called Philotyper, which we can post to CRAN that other people can use to enable their uh, classification of 16S RNA gene sequences. What I'd like to do today is apply a filter to the confidence score. So in the RDP paper, they talked about using a filter of 80%. I don't know where 80% comes from, but 80% I find is commonly used when people are doing bootstrap type of analysis with phylogenetics. And so they used 80% here. I think there is a little bit of debate over whether or not to use 80% or something lower or something higher. I'm gonna use 80% and maybe we will add this to a user facing function to let our users decide what confidence threshold that they want to use. If you go to the benchmarking and then vignette, file uh, here in our studio, you'll pop up this uh, script. Of course, if you want to get this code as well as everything in the repository that we're working on, if you go down below in the show notes, you'll see a link to the beginning of the episode and a link to the end of the episode. Those links take you to GitHub to again, see what the repository looks like before and after uh, this episode. So I have added three new sequences to our vignette. And again, I'm using this vignette to kind of think about how a user would interact with the functions that we're giving them, what kind of functions they would need to generate meaningful results. And so previously, let's go ahead and reload all this stuff. We're getting our taxonomy and fast day data from the 19th version of the RDP training set. Um, and it's upset because I forgot to load everything. So I'll go ahead and load the tidyverse. I'm also in my package directory, so I'll go ahead and load uh, Philotyper, and then let's try that again and get our genera, our FASTA data, our sequence names, our sequences, and then join together the taxonomy and sequence data to make sure everything is in the right order. And then we build our Kamer database using a Kamer size of eight. Again, if you're interested in this, but you haven't been following along, I really encourage you to start back at the beginning of this series. I'll put a link up here for anybody that's interested in going back to do that. And then we use as an unknown sequence, the first sequence of the data set. And I talked about at the end of last episode that the problem with that is that we're gonna get an inflated confidence score because if you're classifying something that's already in the database, it's gonna be really easy to find that. So anyway, it's good for a proof of principle. And we use 100 bootstraps. And again, that Kamer size of eight. And we then could detect the Kamers in our unknown sequence. We could then get the bootstrap subsamples of those. Um, but basically uh, predefining the vector and then running through a loop where we get the Kamers and then classify the Kamers in this loop here that takes a second. And then we saw last time that we could generate the consensus. And so as we saw before, this is a mycobacterium sequence and we have 100% confidence all the way across. So I went back into my files to find three other sequences that perhaps aren't in the database but that I would like to see how they classify, okay? And so I'm gonna go ahead and put Bacteroides in place for an unknown sequence here, and then kind of run through the paces here. Again, what we'd like to have is a classify sequences function that generates all this stuff, but we're not there yet. So this comes back as a Bacteroides, as the name suggested of the variable, and we have confidence, high confidence in that. Uh, look, let's look at this Ocelerospiraceae. <laughs> Just say it fast, man, say it fast. Um, and we'll plug that in here. And so here what we find with this Ocelerospiraceae um, is that it does go down to the genus level of Flintybacter, but the confidence is only about 58%. And so if we applied a filter, we could imagine this being Ocelerospiraceae underscore unclassified, right? Um, and so that would be filtering it. And then if we were to like format the name, then um, that would kind of, uh, we'd have Oslo Spracia unclassified, perhaps at like 98% confidence, okay? 
that's one way of approaching it that we've used with developing the version in the mother software package. And so now there's a Bactroidale sequence here as well. Um, and so then this one we see, um, we kind of lose confidence. So kingdom, phylum, class, order. So at the order level, we have 94% confidence that it's a Bactroidales, less so with um, the family and genus levels. And so again, we might want to, again, think about Bactroidales unclassified, Bactroidales unclassified. So that's the goal of today's episode is to apply a filter to restrict the minimum confidence score. So let's go ahead and save that. And again, if you wanna get these, uh, sequences. If you go to the vignette um, for the end of the episode, you will see those sequences in there and you can grab them as well. So I'm going to go ahead and open up um, my Kamers uh, script as well as my test. So use test on Kamers. Again, you could use the beautiful finder window in the lower right corner here, but eh, if my cursor is already in the console, it makes it just as easy. So let's come down to test Kamers. And we're gonna do test that. And then we'll say apply filter to uh, confidence score. Okay. And let's imagine that we have, well, let's take something like, um, like this one, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. This was our um, Oslo, yeah, Oslo Sparacier, right? And so uh, what we'll do is this. And so we'll then say this is, yeah, I know it doesn't like my formatting, does it? Oslo Sparacie, we'll make a lowercase o, uh, and we'll do a list. And then our list will be taxonomy equals C on that. Uh, and let's see, let's go ahead and clean this up. All right, all right, so again, we now have our classification for the Oslo Sparaceae sequence, right? Saying it a few more times, get a little bit more comfortable saying it. And then we'll say filtered uh, will be the same type of thing. And we'll do that. And so I could imagine leaving this out. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and leave that out, right? And we'll go ahead and leave that out as well. We'll go ahead and then create a function filter taxonomy on um, Oslo Sparacie, right? Right, and then we'll say min confidence of 0 0.80, and then we'll say this is observed, and then we'll do expect equal observed and filtered. All right, so and again, if we test it, it's going to bonk because it doesn't know that function. All right, so we'll go ahead and take this function definition over into Kamers and we'll get going with that and put that in and then we'll assign this with the function function did you know that the function keyword is actually a function yeah it's pretty wild all right um, and so then this we'll say as classification on that and so for testing i'm going to say classification is the oscillo all right uh, so that's loaded. And now again, what we wanna do is think about how we're going to filter this, right? So of course there's a number of ways we could do this. I'm immediately thinking about classification, uh, dollar sign uh, confidence, and then saying that greater than min confidence, and maybe I'll do less greater than or equal to, uh, and it doesn't like that I haven't defined it. So I'll go ahead and uh, define it so it's happy with me. And then we'll try that again, right? And so those are trues and falses. Um, I could do which on this. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do that because we're gonna be applying this multiple times. So I'll say these are high confidence. And then what I'll do will be filtered, will be a list. And then I'll do filtered taxonomy. That will then be classification uh, taxonomy with high confidence, right? And so if I kind of run these lines, make sure we get what we expected. Oh, I misspelled confidence, high confidence, all right? And then filtered will be a list. And so why didn't that work? So I think the problem might be these double braces here. Um, so let's go ahead and remove those double braces 
and see what this gets us if we look at those. So those are empty. Ah, what's going on? Let's see. So classification taxonomy is null. What is classification? It's got taxonomy. If I've got double square brackets, that comes out as null. Hmm. Let's see. I think I spelled it right. Ah, I must have misspelled it. Tax. Ah, yes, <laughs> I misspelled it. I had taxonomy, not taxonomy. All right. Ah, let's see. Okay. Run it again. That works. And that gets us those. And so then we also want to do confidence, right? And we'll copy and paste. Sometimes copy and paste propagates problems. Sometimes it solves problems. So let's now look at filtered. Wonderful. That works out great. So um, this, again, was our function. And I think we didn't have a closing brace. And then we'll return filtered. So let's go ahead and test it and make sure that works. No, of course, that didn't work. Why didn't you work? Ah, I didn't have an open curly brace up here. OK, so we'll do that, test it. Wonderful. That passes with flying colors. Wonderful. So let's come back to our vignette then. And again, if we look at our Bactroidales, let's see what that does. Uh, well, we actually have to, to run it in here, right? And so our function, again, was called filter taxonomy on uh, BS class. And I need to load it. All right. And now we try it again. And it's unhappy. Classification dollar sign confidence invalid for atomic operators. That's really surprising. Um, oh, right. Uh, because I gave it the wrong thing. So this should be consensus. All right. I, I heard you tell me, Pat, you're doing something weird. All right, there we go. That's much better. And so now we see it goes to Bacteroid Alleys with those four confidence scores. We're in good shape and we're happy with that result. So the next thing that I want to do is go ahead and see if we can't print out a attractive appearing classification. So let's make another test. So we'll do test that and then we'll say print out uh, filtered consensus uh, taxonomy. Right. I guess it doesn't have to be filtered, right? Um, yeah, print out consensus taxonomy. And we'll go ahead and put in the body of the test. And maybe what I'll do is I'll go ahead and grab this um, as being the filtered taxonomy. And we then feed this into print underscore taxonomy on filtered. And then we'll say, um, tax string is that. And then our expected, uh, we might do something. I'm going to go ahead and grab this. Um, and so we'll do bacteria um, 100, uh, Basiliota 100, semicolon there, Clostridia um, 0.99, and then Eubacteriales, that should be 0.99 as well. And then our Oscillobacteriaceae should be 0.98. And then let's also do the same thing, but with unclassified uh, at the end of it. So we'll say unclassified, okay, cool. And so then we'll do expect equal uh, tax string and expected, okay, so again, Run it, it fails, and we'll go ahead and now create that function down here. Uh, again, we're doing this no RD so that the documentation function doesn't throw a fit uh, when we haven't provided documentation. These are kind of inward looking functions versus user facing functions. So user facing functions are the functions that you as a user would use when you're working in R, whereas these internal functions are really the functions that our user facer functions ultimately are using. So we'll say function, and then we'll say here classification, and um, maybe I'll call this consensus. All right, and we'll get that. And so let me grab our test case of filtered. So we'll do consensus on filtered, uh, basically copying the variable over so I don't have to type everything. Um, and so 
This should work regardless of how long the strings are. I suppose we might want to double check that the strings are the same length, but again, my thought is if it's an inter internal facing function, I don't really need to do that checking because everything should be the same length if we've been doing things right along the way. So, um, so again, what we want to do is basically merge these all together. And so um, how do we do that? Well, let's find out. So what we could do is some type of paste, right? So we could think about doing like paste on consensus uh, taxonomy and consensus dollar sign confidence. Let's see what that does. Ah, that's cool. That worked really nicely, actually. <laughs> it worked actually a lot better than I thought it was gonna work. Um, and so we can paste together two vectors going element wise. And so we're gonna do that, right? Um, and so there's a couple things that stand out. First, we need our parentheses. Second of all, um, these are being shown as decimals rather than as numbers um, or whole integers, right? So we would need to multiply these by 100, right? So we could do something like this, right? Do 100 times that, and then that gets what we want. And now we need our parentheses around the bootstrap value. And so I think what we'll do is maybe split this up a bit. And so let's go ahead and do uh, pretty uh, confidence as that, right? And so again, this is gonna be a pretty confidence, but not yet. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and do paste, uh, let's do paste zero, and we'll do an open parenthesis, that, and then a closing parenthesis. And so then what will that look like? That'll look like this with our parentheses. So that's our pretty confidence. And so then we'll paste our consensus taxonomy to our pretty uh, confidence. Okay, and so then that gets us that, but we've got a space here. So maybe we'll put paste zero in there because I don't want spaces in case someone's gonna be reading this into something else. Um, let's go ahead and kind of butt them up against each other. And so then what we could do would be another paste, um, but with a collapse. So when you paste two vectors together, like we did, um, like up where? Right here, right? Um, what's happening is that it, um, it puts a space as the delimiter between those, and it's two vectors. And so that would be like sep, right? So if we did uh, sep equals, uh, let's do a vertical line. It's gonna put a vertical line in between those, right? Or if I did sep space, that's what we had before. Or if I did sep nothing, then that's basically the same as paste zero. But if I want to smush all those together, then what we could do would be uh, collapse equals nothing, and it smushes them all together, right? So if you have elements in a vector, if you have a vector, so say we have uh, one to 10, right? and I did paste um, on one to 10, it's basically gonna give me back a vector or with 10 characters, right? But if I instead did collapse equals nothing, then it smushes that all together. Or for our purposes, if I do a semicolon, it's gonna put a semicolon in between all of those. And so I think what I'll do is one paste. And so we should be able to do sep equals nothing, collapse equals uh, semicolon. And that worked. One thing that's not exactly the same as the input, um, but I'm kind of, I'm not sure what I think about, is that we don't have a semicolon at the end. So you might recall from the last episode, the input taxonomy had a semicolon at the end. I think I'm done with semicolons at the end. I'm going to leave that off uh, because when you do something like separate or string split, that semicolon at the end is going to create that empty field at the very end. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and test it. It fails. Ah, it fails because I didn't get everything <laughs> in integer format, right? Um, so, okay. And of course, if we had a thousand bootstraps, then we would have a decimal to the right, right? You know, 100.0 or 98.5 or something like that. But this is what we want. All right, so now we test it, and we're still bonking. Why are we bonking? Ah, we're bonking because of this last term, the um, Oscillosporaceae unclassified. I'm wondering what we want to do with that. And part of me thinks that um, 
we want to ha handle it here. And part of me wants to handle it back up here in the filtering. Um, and so maybe what we could have would be something like in the print would be something like a number of levels. So we could perhaps have an argument for print taxonomy like n levels of six. And we'd have to make sure that n levels was greater than the actual number of levels. Um, but um, I think that's doable. Uh, and so how would we do that? So let's come back to KMERS and here we can add the argument n levels, all right? And we're gonna have to think about this. If our actual number of levels or if the length of consensus confidence is less than n levels, then we're basically gonna wanna take the last value we have and then duplicate that with our unclassified. So again, if we take our consensus taxonomy and that's five levels, but we want six, we could say given levels as length on uh, consensus taxonomy, right? And so that should be five, yep. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is a while loop. This might be a horrible idea, but we'll see. So <laughs> we'll say while uh, length on consensus taxonomy is less than N levels, what we're gonna do is we're going to take that, and so actually I'm gonna put given levels here. I changed my mind. Um, well, given levels is less than n levels, then we're gonna take consensus taxonomy um, given levels, and we're going to apply that to given levels plus one, okay? Like that. And, and that'll be better than doing the C function, if you recall. Um, and so then we'll also do this with confidence. All right. And we're gonna then need to increment given levels up one, okay? So then we can say given levels is given levels plus one. And so let's test this and see what happens. The worst thing that can happen with a while loop like this is that it runs forever. And we'll figure that out pretty quickly here. So that complained, all right, so it should be n levels uh, of six. Okay, so that ran, didn't complain. And so then if we look at consensus, we, we see that. And of course, I propagated the given name of the last level, Ocelospracier, um, but we really wanna paste that with underscore unclassified. So we'll do paste that with, um, underscore unclassified, right? And then get that. And we're gonna put a sep of, well, I guess I could do underscore and then remove that, okay. So let's try that again. And so we'll do that and that. And then let's look at our consensus. Yeah, and so we got that. The problem is of course that like, because we were testing this, it actually went out to, to station seven, so to speak. Um, but I think this should work. So let's go ahead and test it. And it fails. <laughs> Why does it fail? Probably because I misspelled something. Um, let's see. And this gets kind of messy trying to compare things when I'm so prone to mistyping unclassified. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and put it into an editor to kind of see where the difference might be. So I'm gonna copy and paste that into the search, oh, into the search. So that's the same through there. All right. And so then that's the same. Ah, I just noticed the difference. The semicolon, the blasted semicolon at the very end. All right, so again, uh, that's in my test. I always feel silly making bugs in my test so let's go ahead and remove that. We'll save and test that passed. Wonderful, cool. And so what we could then do back in our vignette would be to do print taxonomy and we'll do, um, we'll say filtered, right? And so you can imagine we could be piping this all together. Um, and so let's go ahead and take filtered, put it in there and we could do N levels. Actually, I'm gonna leave that off and um, 
it's not happy because I haven't loaded it, but I'm going to add another test. And my extra test uh, will be to do uh, the same thing, but without specifying end levels. So this should fail, fails. And so what we want to do is then make this by default a six. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and test that and it should pass. Wonderful. And now I'll go ahead and load everything. And then let's try this again with our back trade alleys. Cool. And actually we got a lot of unclassifieds. Why is that? Hmm. So our filtered is that, ah, you know what? Um, so we have unclassified and then unclassified, unclassified. And I'm surprised that my test didn't pick that up. And that's probably because I'm using a different string. And so because I found a bug, I'm going to take that bug and make a test out of it, right? And so that is going to be um, this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and grab this again. And um, let's do this. So we'll do call this um, back trade alleys. Uh, back, um, list. And I'll go ahead and speed through this so you don't have to watch me fumble with my keyboard. All right. So I got that all reformatted. Let's go ahead and test. It should fail. It failed, but that's because I gave it the wrong argument. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and put in back trade alleys. Um, and maybe up here to make things clear instead of filtered, I'll go ahead and put in the Oscillosporacea. And then let's see, that needs to go into filtered there. Okay. So let's go ahead, save and test. And again, um, filtered not found right right here. Great. So now we're back to where we want to be, where we have our actual generating this double unclassified at the end. So let's come back to our while loop. So the problem that I see is that it's right here, right? And so what we're doing is we're taking given levels and we're appending unclassified to that and assigning that to given levels plus one. But given levels plus one is always getting incremented, right? Whereas what this is supposed to be is the original given levels, right? So I'll call this original levels, right? And then I'll also create given levels equals to original levels, right? And then original levels I'll put in here um, in place of these given levels. So these are the taxonomy of the deepest classification we have. So go ahead and save and test and hopefully this will pass. Wonderful. Knocked that out of the park. <laughs> well done team. And so that's really cool. So again, if we come back to our vignette then, and let's see, we have back to is loaded there. And so let's go ahead and reclassify all this. And sure enough, uh, I forgot to load things. So let's try that again. Um, and so I'll go ahead and print that. Good. <laughs> that solved the problem, right? So very really cool. Um, and so we could imagine doing this also with Bacteroides here, and that gives us the right classification as well. So again, our classify sequences is going to be user facing. So this is what they'll see when they're working in R. And I kind of feel like perhaps that should be um, one function. Filter taxonomy should be another function because I could imagine someone getting back their taxonomy and then they'll want to apply different types of filters to their data and then they'll want to print that right and so you know maybe we're getting up to having you know four user facing functions the other user facing functions that i can imagine are up here and i think this goes back to kind of the start of this series where we talked about reading in the data reading in the fast day data reading in the taxonomy data and kind of uh, going through all that to make sure everything is properly formatted, you know, perhaps putting all of this type of stuff into uh, one single function, right? And so maybe that's what we'll do in the next episode is start working on some more of these user facing functions so that you don't miss that episode. Please, please, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.